Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com This is it's going to be a message to that I'm going to spread and put I'm going to spread because there's enough stuff being spread isn't there I'm going to I'm going to say inseminate I'm going to put it on all of my podcasts so it's not specifically for any one podcast but I'm going to share this uh, audio and it's also going to be on video on YouTube and Facebook please only listen when you can safely close your eyes although this is not a hypnosis session this is not going to sleep session although you might just be so your eyes might rather close than look at my beard for too long your eyes might say I can't handle the beard I got to close my eyes and then you might fall asleep so just just be aware of that so if you're if you're in the middle of a war you know in your your you know your pilot in a uh you know a big bomber and you're sending missiles into and blowing up innocent children and stuff you know don't listen to this at the time you know <laughs> um Wait till you get home and then you can listen to this. Now, I. The reason really for this recording is just to point something out that I think is really important, and that is what we say affects us what we say to ourselves and what we say to other people about ourselves affects other people. Affects other people, affects us. Affects other people as well. Um, but it affects us, which is what's the most important thing we're focusing on. Of course, what we say can affect other people when we're talking about ourselves, because they might be you know, thinking of themselves at the time. So, uh, for example, I could talk to you for an hour, and I could, I, I do have the ability to do that. I'm distracted by my sexy beard, I don't know. Anyway, um, and if, you, if someone's talking to you for long enough about a subject, and it might be something that you weren't even prepared to be thinking about, uh, for example, a Christmas dinner or a family occasion or a relative or a loved one or whatever. Then you start getting in contact with your own feelings about something that might have happened in your life. So, of course, other people can affect you. Um, and that's normal. That's just human. Humans, we affect each other. That's just it. We are affected. Words are Flipping powerful. But this isn't about that. This is about you. This is about what you say to yourself. And I'm gonna and this is the this is the truth, whether it's you've got chronic pain issues, whether you've got insomnia, uh stress, whatever it might be. Uh and I'm saying those three things because that's three of the reasons why you may, those that listen to my recordings, may listen to my recordings. So outside of listening to me blabbering on, and being really boring, outside of that, there's stuff that you can do for yourself that's, I would say, probably more important and more useful for you than even listening to me. Okay. Now this is it. This I'm gonna give you it. And it's 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 nothing new, it's nothing it's trust me, you're not gonna suddenly um start exploding with ecstasy when I tell you. It's just it's a very basic thing, but it's really, really, really important. Really important. I mean, I'm talking proper, proper important that you take this on board. 
regardless of who you are, where you are, what you think about yourself, whether you think you're the greatest thing ever or whether you think that you're not. Um, regardless of whatever your situation or experiences are, this is really important because uh, it changes your life affects your life and yeah anyway I won't this is not so exciting that there's when I actually say it you're gonna think oh yeah so like me saying oh come to the best restaurant you sort of you can't believe the food and I just give you a, like, a bowl of porridge or something like, oh, oh yeah lovely thanks I was hungry but mm, wasn't the greatest experience and so this is it what you well I've already said it what you say to yourself what you say to yourself. So I'm going to give you some examples. And, well, I can't sleep. I'm a terrible sleeper. I struggle to get to sleep. Oh, I never get to sleep when I'm in bed. Or oh, when I'm in bed, my, my mind races. Oh, there's no point going to bed. I want to get any sleep anyway. Oh, what's the point going when I go to sleep? Oh, I'm, I'm only going to stay awake. Uh, yeah, okay. Now, regardless of whether or not that's been true in the past a thousand times, that's not the point. Okay? Because, you know, some people come with the argument, and go, well, that's what it's like, man. That's what it's like. I mean, I do try to go to sleep and, and then oh, my, my, my brain's racing. Yeah, I know. That's why I do the recordings. It's horrible. It is horrible. But, it means your brain's working, which is not a terrible thing. It means your brain's active. It means you're not a zombie, you're not, you know, it means that there's stuff going on. It's just doing it at the wrong time. It's, you know, it's, uh, it's like farting in the bath, not necessarily what you need, you know? It's two different things you need. You'd, or uh, having sneezing continuously during a funeral it's it's not useful behavior but you can't necessarily control it at the time but if you think beforehand then maybe you wouldn't have been snorting that pepper before you got to the funeral then it wouldn't have been sneezing so it's reversing it reversing it from Ooh, uh this and when i say it, i don't mean it in a mocking way like Oh, I can't get to sleep. Because if I didn't care about people not being able to get to sleep, I wouldn't have devoted the last 15 years of my life trying to help people to get to sleep. So, you know what I mean? I'm not making fun of it. I'm just saying it's not helping you. So when you catch yourself, and that's what you need to do, is catch yourself saying this stuff to yourself and then saying, Oi, nah. No. No, 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 no. So what you've got to imagine is me, just this, just me walking around. Let's say, if you had someone like me walking around on big beard, and just walking around, following you around, saying, and just saying, oh, and you're getting ready for bed, saying, oh, you're not going to get to sleep, you're not need, and you're brushing your teeth, you're going to be staying awake for ages. You're going to be staying awake for ages, yeah? You're just going to be, like, thinking about stuff. You brush your teeth, like, fuck, go away, go away. And you'd go into the toilet, and they're saying, oh, yeah, yeah, it's really bad, you know, no, you're going to have to be wiping for ages. You're going to have to wipe in for ages. You're going to run out of toilet paper. Yes, you are, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, just picking you up on every single little thing. You know, it's going to be annoying. And some people do have that stuff, but they're not aware of it. And they've got this voice saying, uh, that it's just, it's, it's, it's a knobhead. It's a knobhead voice. It's not useful. It ain't helpful. And maybe it's as useful as this video. But the fact is, I'm right. I mean, it's, that's a simple fact. I'm right in saying that the voices are not helping you. The voices. I don't mean the voices. I'm talking about that 
negative voice. Sometimes a, a negative voice could be really helpful. You know, if it says, if, the, if you're about to walk into a, a crack house to sit down to watch television, thinking that you're safe and thinking that it's all fine. Um, yeah, maybe if the negative voice in you had said, well, maybe it's not a safe thing to do. Maybe I shouldn't walk uh, through, <laughs> I don't know, through a forest at night without any shoes on. I, I don't know. Just, you know, there's a bit like, oh, okay. But that could be classed as the reasonable voice. But that negative voice, well, no, 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 I think it is a moany voice as well, to be fair. But maybe that's the problem. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's factual. Maybe for you, it might be a factual voice. No, nope, not to get sleep. No, nope, not. I'm just going to be laying there, thinking, thinking, thinking. I didn't think about that. So maybe, is it a factual voice? Is it in charge of you? Is it your boss? Is that voice that's saying, oh, I'm not going to sleep, is that, is that your boss? Are you a slave to that voice? Oh, I'd be a bit upset about that. The idea that a thought that, oh, I'm never going to, you know, I'm going to just be a, awake and I won't be able to get to sleep. The idea that you're being bossed around by that voice. Wow. That doesn't seem fair, does it? I mean, basically, what you've got, this is the scenario. You've got a little child running around after you telling you what to do and if anyone's ever had kids anyone's ever it got nephews nieces godchildren or just been unfortunate enough to haven't spent time with them at christmas or something um some kids they get to an age where they do like to boss you around and it's fun it's funny i want you to come here now pretend you got tea in a cup <laughs> yeah all right okay that's funny for a little while but you know as a parent when they're standing there with a lighter trying to set fire to the curtains you're gonna stop them aren't you I'm going to say, oh, okay, this is fun. They're the boss. They're the boss. No, no, you could take that lighter away. How did they get the lighter? You don't allow it because you're the boss. So, of course, you know, setting fire to the house is a damn awful thing. But, physical and emotional effect of allowing this silly little childish voice to stop you know to tell you that you're not able to sleep could have a much worse effect on your life than having you even losing your house over time you know it could shorten your life it could cause all kinds of physical mental health issues that um, I'm, I'm sure that having a house fire would be one of the worst things that could happen to somebody. But, you know, I'm just saying generally from that perspective. So the one thing you're going to notice, what, no matter how annoying this video might have been for you, maybe having to wear sunshades for the T-shirt because it was so bright or trying to figure out I can um how <laughs> how did how did this happen look at his beard look, look what what look he's is he 90 is he is he is he a smurf or what, what, what is he is he a little garden gnome you know 
Um, regardless, something in your head now is implanted. I've implanted it in your head. Is you're going to notice when you say this negative bullshit to yourself. You're going to notice it. Because maybe you didn't notice it before. You're going to notice it. You're going to notice it when you say to yourself, oh yeah, I just can't sleep. I just am terrible at sleeping. Or I've focused on the sleeping bit, but oh yeah, I'm always in pain. Uh, nothing ever works. Well, when you believe, if you really believe that, you're never going to look, you're going to stop looking, you're not going to do anything. And the fact is, stuff does work. Stuff can work, even if it's temporary, even if it gives you a half an hour reprieve. Reprieve? Is that the right word? There is things out there that can help. And my recordings are pretty good for chronic pain relief. The relaxation stuff. When you relax, the chronic pain goes down. The only problem with someone with chronic pain, and I've got chronic pain, I've got, which shoulder is it? It's that one. <laughs> no, I've got chronic pain in my shoulder and in my lower back. And so I know what chronic pain is. My lower back's the worst one now. I know what. No one wobbling my head. Weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. I've got lower back pain, and it's awful. But I'm lucky in the sense that I'm so good looking that it, it you know, it kind of balances it out. That makes no sense. I know how to do hypnosis. I know how to relax myself. And I know how to, there's lots of different ways to deal with it. And I also know that it's a, if you can compartmentalize, like, okay, that's just my back. It's my lower back. It's not the whole of my back. It's just my lower back. It's not my knees. It's not my willy. It's not my feet. It's not my ears. It's not my hands. It's not my elbows. It's not my tummy. It's not my nipples. You know? It's, it's like, well, what would it matter if it was your nipples? Having sore nipples, and I have, nip, Andre bit my nipple once when I was a baby, that was sore for ages, and the chafing against the, look, I've got, <laughs> I had, oh God, that's really right, I didn't expect to do that. But yeah, it hurt. So I'm just saying, this compartmentalizing, and I'm not sure if that's the right way to say it, you got the lower back. That's the part that hurts. My buttocks don't hurt, although they are connected you know, quite close to the lower back. Um, my spine seems to be fine, you know, so it's, but that's a different thing. And this isn't a, a recording to help you with your chronic pain necessarily. It's not chronic, it's not chronic pain hypnosis session. It's not a sleep hypnosis. It's not any hypnosis session. It's just me talking to you. And because you know what? When you hear me say, oh, any, anything about, if you've got chronic pain and you hear someone sounding like they're uh, almost possibly being a bit frivolous, maybe a bit, um, I don't know, cocky, maybe a bit mocking, although I didn't mean it in a mocking way, but I meant it in a jokey kind of, uh, in some ways way when I talk that gets people's go up gets people's back up you know the anus gets tight and they get very very aware of what's going on like what's going on what what did he just say what did he just say what did he just say that's what I want because I've got your attention and once I got your attention, it's gone into your head, bang. The ideas that I've been talking about, it's in there. You can't get it out now, it's in there. Sorry. 
And it's not like I've implanted something really bad. All I've implanted is for you to realize that what you say affects how you feel. Bang! If I let you see me do that again, I have a headache later. I won't. <laughs> exactly. If like, I'm gonna have a headache later, or all this walking around, my back's gonna feel terrible when I get home. Well, it might do. But talking about it as if it's going to feel terrible is not going to help, is it? No. Oh, I'm going to do that exam. I'm going to fail it. When I get and sit down to do that exam, I'm just going to, my mind's going to freeze and I'm going to forget all the stuff I know. And I'm just going to be looking at a blank piece of paper and I won't be able to do anything. Well, what's the point in going to the exam then, if that's what you believe? What's the point? I mean, if you really believe that, then, you know, I mean, it might happen. But it's more likely to happen if you believe it's going to happen. If you go into um, a supermarket and you feel in a crappy mood, I know, trust me, I know how to, how to feel crappy. I'm sure everybody does. But... I go in and think, oh, everyone, everyone's going to just be annoying to me today. Everyone's going to be annoying. Everyone's going to wind me up. And nine out of ten times, again, that's not really true, but I will find that people are annoying. Wherever I go, people are annoying. Cars are just not stopping, so I can't cross the road. People aren't indicating. Even though I don't drive, shouldn't really bother me too much, but it's still annoying. You know, uh, there's a queue, uh, the credit card machine's not working, whatever. Even though that wouldn't really make any difference how I felt, but it helps to let me feel crappy and enjoy wallowing in that self-pity. So, but if I go, and I've tested this out, like consciously tested it, thinking, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this in a positive mood. I'm going to go to the garage in a good mood. And I actually, it's totally true, I did this a few weeks ago. I'm going to be nice. I'm going to be charming. No, I didn't say that. I'm going to be nice, calm, relaxed. And I had a little chant as I was walking towards the garage. Calm, relaxed, friendly. Calm, relaxed, friendly. And I was almost laughing to myself as I was saying it. Um, especially when I realised I was saying it out loud, really loudly. Um... But then, like, if you keep it inside your head, it's sometimes easier, uh, more socially acceptable. And I walked into the garage and I just felt better. I felt better within myself. I felt more relaxed within myself. And... And I thought, oh, okay, this is a bit strange. The item that I was going to get was there. Normally, I'd expect it not to be there. Uh, because the garage is, it's not the best garage in the world, to be fair. It's this, they run out of stuff quite quick. But this is long before the Lurgy became, came in. You know, this, they, even before that, they had the, uh, the uh, you know, before the plague was here, we had other. They just weren't good at like replacing stuff. Anyway, normally I'd be walking there expecting them not to have what I want. That's not useful. But I got there expecting them to have it, and they did. Now, whether I expect them to have it or not, it's not gonna make any difference. I know that. I'm not a witch. But if they didn't have it, I could have that sense of disappointment then. Not the whole of the journey there. Because I'm already in that negative state when I get there. So even if they do have it, I'm still in that negative state. Because what I'm buying isn't that exciting for me to start doing cartwheels and like be like, 
you know, sparks, fireworks shooting out my ears because I'm so, so happy and elated. It's not that kind of situation. So I go into the garage, my stuff is there. This is a petrol station, you know, where they sell stuff other than, well, they sell petrol, but you know, other stuff as well. So I go in there, my items there, and I go, I'm going about, I'm looking, oh, I'll get some chocolate because my belly, this big, massive, huge belly of mine takes maintenance. There's a lot of work involved. And so, especially now that I've got this big beard, because people, I can't even see the belly anymore. They're like, oh, look, they look about it, it's the big, massive, smelly beard full of food and stuff like that. No, I want people to look at my belly as well. I want people to laugh at that too. I don't want people just making fun of my beard. I want my belly. I spent 20 years getting this belly. You know, as good as it is. Anyway, it's not really the point. So, I go into the garage and the garage says, oh, and I'm, I'm looking at some chocolate. And I'm not sure if you call it candy in some parts of the world, but chocolate. Uh, chocolate bars and one of the people that works there starts talking to me like out of the blue doesn't normally he said how you doing you all right I said yeah why would you want to what do you want to what do you know for what what I didn't I said what yeah hello and he started talking about coke because I've got a little bit of a thing for coca-cola a little bit of a, a love love relationship a little bit of romance but uh, looks like I'm gonna have to stop drinking it because it's it makes me talk like this. No, I've not had any today. Um, not had any for ages. No, I have not had any. But no, but that's a different thing. But and that's what we were talking about. It's like oh, okay, and he said, yeah, I stopped drinking coke uh, or fizzy drinks about five months ago, and I was asking him genuinely. Like I was interested. Like how did it affect you? Um, I'm not particularly interested in the health benefits, kind of, not that interested. Which I suppose I should be, but, you know, I'd, I'm doing all right. You know, I don't drink alcohol. I don't really do my, I really, I really, really smoke crack. Um, I, <laughs> I, <laughs> I, Oh, what else don't I do? Oh yeah, I don't, I don't, uh, yeah, I don't have any enjoyment in my life. So uh, Coca-Cola is kind of one of the only things that I kind of do that I like. But And the tea cake, I like to have a, I like to have a tea cake, toasted tea cake and a can of Coke. It's one of my little, it scratches an itch, you know, it scratches an itch. Anyway, I, and he was really friendly, got, got speaking to him and he, you know, and I thought, wow, this is weird. Like, he's just talking to me. And then I'm waiting and there's, there's someone that works in the garage that he, I don't know, I must have, um, murdered him in a in a previous life or something because he really don't like me uh, for some reason uh never has for five years like really just wow and but like he was on there and i was thinking okay it's fine it's fine and then someone else comes onto the till and i and i get served by them so they open up both the tills so it's like it's a really nice experience like wow and she's asking me how i am and um how I'm dealing with, you know, wearing the the mask and how funny I look when it doesn't actually cover my face. Yeah, so, you know, because it doesn't, it only goes back there and then the beard. Because um, you can't see it because of the beard, but my nose is about 18 inches long, about five foot wide. So it's, I've got a very big head. Seriously, I've got a very big head. I've got quite a big body, but my head is, it's the angle that you can't see is actually, um, 
the head is actually bigger than the body. I've just, I've done special effects on the camera to, on the video to make it look better or more human. So that chanting helped me. I'm going to be positive, relaxed, calm, gentle, kind, gentle, kind. So what we say to ourselves, what you say to yourself affects how you feel. That is the truth. And it's not an opinion. You have no say in this. You have no argument in this. You can't argue the case with me because it's true. That's it. End of discussion. And I like that because it's nice to be right. But it's not me being right. This is just, uh, it's not my idea. This isn't my, I'm just presenting it in my own um, amazing way. My own sexy fruitcake kind of mm, way, you know? But this is a universal fact. What we say to ourselves, how we think affects us. It also affects other people as well, but we're focusing on, uh, on you, focus on you. What you say to yourself affects you. So when you, and also you're going to start noticing. You're going to start noticing from now on. When you say that stuff to other people, you're going to notice it when other people say it to you. So when someone says something negative to you, oh, I can never sleep. Oh, I'm a terrible sleeper. I'm crap at maths. I'm, I'm rubbish at this. I'm crappy at this at that. You're going to start noticing it. But more importantly, you're going to start noticing when you say it. You're going to start noticing it when you think it. When you think these negative things. You're going to start noticing it. And when you notice it, it is... It disrupts the thought. It stops the thought. The thought sudden it's almost a... It doesn't have free reign. At the moment, those thoughts, those thoughts think that they're invisible and invincible and can do whatever the hell they want. Playing with your mind, trying to control you, trying to manipulate you. But they can't if you confront them or at least once you show them that you can see, that you can hear, then they don't have that power because they're not powerful, not physically powerful. They don't have anything other than just words. And words, although some of the most powerful things in the world, only because of the other person's reaction or your reaction to those words. In themselves, it's just a word. I just spat there. Did you see that? In yourself, a word means nothing other than the meaning you give it. So a word has no power, yet at the same time, it can be the most powerful thing in the world. You know, words can start wars. Words could also um, give freedom to millions of people. You know, it's words are powerful. And what you say to yourself, that's what this is about. What you say to yourself is the most important thing. If you say to yourself, I can sleep easily at night. I can sleep well. When I lay down, I'm going to fall asleep. Doesn't matter if it's true or not. Doesn't matter. That's not the point. Keep saying it. Because it will become true. Because when you keep saying it out loud, 
your unconscious mind starts to believe it and takes it as a command. And I'm not saying you haven't got to say it out loud, out loud, if you say it to yourself, whichever you want to do. And the more you say it, the more you say the positive stuff to yourself, your mind, your unconscious mind, your brain, whatever, absorbs that as a command. Because your unconscious mind does not care. It believes you. Your unconscious mind believes what you tell it. So, you basically have a very gullible unconscious mind. In a sense that it believes what you tell it. So instead of taking advantage of this gullibility by trying to, you know, manipulate and get money out of it, like some people would, someone that's a bit gullible. I mean, we should get rid of the gullible thing. They used to use the word trusting. That's a nicer word, isn't it? Someone that just trusts another person. How many of us can say we are trusted to the point of being gullible? Because gullible is just a horrible way of calling, it's, it's being snidey to someone that's actually honest and trusting and a nice person. I'm not, I'm not a trusting person. I used to be. Sometimes I am, but generally, no, not really. But my unconscious mind is, it trusts what I say and it also listens to what I listen to, whether it's television, movies, other people, audios, recordings, the neighbors, friends. It's listening to all that, all that stuff. So, if you've got a lot of the same stuff coming in, it's going to have more of an effect. So if you've got, you've got an angry friend or aggressive, uh, if you're around people who are aggressive, are verbally aggressive, I mean, that's going to affect you. We know that. Everybody knows that. You, we know that, don't we? We're affected by who we're around. But part of the reason that for that is because your unconscious mind is hearing this all the time and it just accepts it. It's not that it hears it's what it doesn't hear it once and just accept it. But when it's hearing it all the time, consistently, over and over again, day in, day out, that's how you can abuse someone by telling them they're no good. Day in, day out. That's how these arseholes uh, destroy people's self-esteem. By telling them, oh, you're no good, you're useless, you're ugly, you're worthless, all that horrible, horrible stuff. Now, if someone says that to you, if someone just came up to you in the street and said, oh, you're, um, in my case, probably, oh, your beard isn't quite as sexy as it's not the sexiest beard in the world, which would be like awful. What do you mean it's not? Of course it's the sexiest beard in the world. But if someone came up to him and said, you're useless, you're worthless, you're a fuck, you're just, just, you're nothing. That is going to annoy me. It's not going to affect my life. Depending on what my reaction is, of course. I mean, if I spend the next three years in prison, but I'm just saying it's not going to, um, that's not going to, it's going to upset me. I'm quite reactive, so it would upset me. But I'm not going to believe it. That's the point. I'm not going to believe it because of that person saying it. And neither are you. You're not going to believe something just because someone said it to you once. So if you've got a boyfriend or a girlfriend, wife, husband, and have started being abusive to you, putting you down, Get out <laughs> before your unconscious mind starts to believe it. Because once you believe it, why are you going to leave? Why would you leave? Because you believe what they're saying. 
all they're doing is just telling you the truth because you believe it. But when they start doing it, you know it's not true. Of course, part of the, uh, the challenge, and again, if you're listening to this and you're in a situation where you're being um, verbally or emotionally abused, again, it's gone in your head, change, something's changed. That hurt, oh, oh. This is gone into your brain now. This has gone into your unconscious mind. And you start to notice, oh, he's doing that. It doesn't feel right. Or she's doing that. That doesn't feel right. Oh. Things change. The way you feel changes. You start to realize that how powerful words are, but at the same time, you don't have to allow them to have power. So if you decide that the only words, the only sentences that, are gonna, that you're going to allow to have power are the positive ones, the uh, affirming, self-affirming, the uh, kind ones, the loving ones, the joyful ones, the supportive ones. But all the other bullshit, no. Take away that power. Take it away. Say, no. And you start to notice. Once you start to notice, that is the start of change. That's the beginning. Because you've got no choice but to make changes. You've got no choice. It's just going to happen. And... If you're in, if you're in a situation where you're being, uh, I know I've gone from, you know, sleeping to being in an abusive relationship, but I did say at the beginning this is going to be covering lots of different things, and it was going to be a short video, it's supposed to be a short video. I don't know what, I'm not sure what happened. I've never, I've never spoken for this long before. Mm -mm 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 -mm. If you're in an abusive relationship and someone's hurting you, from this second forward, things are going to change for you. So whatever was allowing you, whatever uh, thoughts you had before that was allowing it to continue, whatever you were saying to yourself before that was allowing it to be kind of okay in your mind, it's not going to happen anymore. You're not going to be getting that support anymore. To allow it to continue. You can be getting a different support. A stronger support. Where your whole body and your mind, every fibre of your being starts to realise and starts to notice. No, this is wrong. This is not going to happen. So if your other half, partner, whether it be a man, a woman, uh, android, I don't know, whatever, was to physically hurt you. I mean, you know, uh, and you didn't want that to happen. But let's face it, some people like to get involved physically and stuff, so... Just saying in a in a hurtful, painful, abusive way. There's something inside you. It's not just in your mind. It's all, it's sort of like it becomes part of you. I mean, in the old times, people used to think that the the mind, the brain, was actually in the heart. I look like I've got like a chest there, don't I? The boobies. Oh. Don't need a girlfriend now, I've got my own to play with. So you got your body takes control, your mind all comes together and you know in order to realise no 
it's, it's, it's kind of like, you know, when you at school and you've got this one bully and quite often it's because they're like a bit more developed, they're stronger, they're just grown up a bit quicker, maybe they're a bit older as well. And they're bullying all the other kids. And there's like 200 children all being scared of this one boy or this one girl. And it's pathetic, really, when you think that it, it only take two or three of those kids to take down that, that boy or girl. And if all 200 just st stamped on them, of course you shouldn't do that because that's against the law, but there'd be nothing but pulp on the floor, would there? You know, it's... When you come together, when, you're, when your body, when your whole fibre of your being comes together and says, no, this is, this is enough. This ain't happening no more. Nope, it's not happening. When you make that decision, when you change how you feel, when you realise that I'm not going to accept this anymore, I'm not going to say this stuff to myself, I'm not going to allow other people to say it to me. I'm not going to allow someone to hurt me anymore. Your life changes. So words are powerful. What we say to ourselves. So, you know, whether it's, oh, I'm going to, I can't get to sleep. You know, if it's telling someone else, I'll never, I can never sleep. Well, you're, you're setting yourself up for having more of that by saying it to yourself. I understand thinking it of um, being annoyed for not being able to sleep. I understand that. I've been there and I've had enough contact with people that uh, insomniacs and stuff to know that it's a terrible thing. As well as chronic pain, I know it's a terrible, terrible thing. But it really makes it worse when you say to yourself the negative things. And even if saying something positive to yourself doesn't initially, immediately make you feel better, it's not going to make you feel worse, is it? But the worst, the worst case scenario is it feels a bit silly. And you know, no matter how silly you feel, you're not me. You can feel good about that, at least I'm not him. At least I'm not that bloke with a beard on with a yellow t-shirt on the video. Hmm, see? So what you say to yourself affects your well-being, your emotional well-being. It affects your life in so many ways. And what you say to other people also affects them. What other people say to you affects you as well. If you allow it. In the past, maybe you did, but now it's in there and you notice it. It's not that you never noticed it, but maybe you just notice every single one now. So when any time you say to yourself, oh, I'm no good. I'm useless, I'm ugly, whatever it might be. An alarm, an alarm actually goes off. It might not sound quite, that wasn't a very good alarm really, would it? I'm not sure if that'd even wake you up, would it? If you fast asleep. I'm not sure the police would come out to that, but it doesn't have to be an alarm, like a, a you know, an actual visual sound, a visual sound. Oh, I need to stop this. I don't know what I'm talking about now. The secret is I never did. Yeah. So, you're going to start noticing. You're going to start noticing when you say this stuff to yourself. When you say it out loud, when you say it to yourself, or when someone says it to you. Someone says something rude to you. Someone puts you down like, What? talking to what are you talking about 
And then you start to notice that little troll, let's not call it a child anymore, let's call it a little troll following you around, telling you that, you know, it's, it's like, you know, see you in the shop, you're looking at the cakes. Oh, it's gonna make you fatter. It's gonna make you fatter. You're gonna get all fat. Like, I already am. Go away. And then you just, you know, you, you just, I wanna go out and buy a can of Coke. Oh, you know, a can of Coke's all sugar. It's gonna, you're gonna lose all your teeth. And you, 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 you. Like, fuck, shut up. It's quite good. I can play the troll because I look like a troll, don't I? Just need a little helmet, a little sword, uh, or a little keyboard. And it's not useful, but you start to notice it being there. You know, you start to notice this troll. And you know what you do with trolls? Delete and block. Delete the message and block the person. That's the way to deal with trolls. Now, the reason why there's still a lot of trolls on YouTube, so people might think, why is there so many horrible messages left on YouTube. It's, it's like, it's almost like there's nothing they can do about it. Well, a lot of YouTubers leave those trolls on YouTube because it puts them higher up the rankings, puts them higher up. It's an algorithm. The more messages and comments they get, whether it's positive or negative, pushes them up. So even if they get 10,000 down thumbs to the video, and only like 3,000 up thumbs, they're still gonna be higher up than if they had just one down thumb. Because it's activity on their Facebook page. And the comments, if it's horrible stuff, it pushes them higher up the ratings, the rankings. So YouTube will present their video to people more often, you know, get more views and make more money. So, I personally think that everybody uh, would be useful if all trolls were deleted and blocked. But that is down to the individual YouTuber. I personally would delete and block. I used to be quite not big on YouTube, but I used to be very active on YouTube about 10 years ago. Um, not anymore. But I'm, I'm on YouTube, but I don't get many views. I get, at the moment, 1,700 1, 1, views a month. That's what I get on my video YouTube channel. I think I've got 450 subscribers. Wow, as a YouTube star. No. But I used to have a few thousand uh, subscribers in my other podcast, on my other YouTube channel, and half a million download um, plays, but not no more. So, what you say to yourself is important. It doesn't matter if you're uh, six years old or sixty-six, or six hundred and sixty-six. Or 6,600. If you're six years old, you shouldn't be watching this anyway. You have to be in, don't you have to be 18 or uh, to watch YouTube? I don't know. But if we taught this to children at an early age, what you think about affects, what you say to yourself affects how you are, how you behave. It might be useful. Anyway, I think that's enough for me. It's been enough enough from me probably for the last, uh, after the first two minutes, I imagine. But I don't care because I don't have to watch it. You don't have to watch it either. But having listened to it while I've been talking, I never have to hear it again. So that's good. If you've listened all the way through, even if you haven't listened all the way through, even if you've listened partly through, you might not be listening to this bit now, obviously, but unless you fast forward it and thought, 
I can't wait. This is a 55 minute video. I can tell just by looking at him that it's going to be amazing, but I reckon he's going to keep the really juicy bits to the end. So I'll skip through. No, you were wrong. That one never had no juicy bits. So I'm going to go. Thank you for listening. And even if you haven't consciously took much notice of this, it's sunk into your unconscious mind. And it's a very positive thing. It can be a life-changing thing. And if you feel benefit, then re-listen. I've added, a, a, I think, at least two mildly humorous bits into the video, which is, I've incorporated very tiny, like, minuscule, kind of like, ah, uh -huh. you know, like, ah. Uh. You know when someone tells you a joke, like, they, they tell you a joke all the way through it, and you go, ah, yeah. <laughs> I've done a, done a couple of those throughout. So to make it a bit more, uh, less horrid, if you do re-listen. You can listen on the podcasts. You haven't got to look at my face. Uh, the podcasts are on my website, jasonnewland.com. So you can watch the video on YouTube or you can listen on, if you're listening on the podcast, then you're listening on the podcast. You're not going to be, you know what I mean? It's like, there's both available. Anyway, I'm going to go. Thank you very much. Remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Bye.